Hello everyone and welcome to Onboardering, the final gathering of this year performing Borders Live 20, a program that I, Alessandro Cianetti, have curated with my brilliant friend and colleague Xavier de Sousa. Today we are launching Lavender Man, Tanya Kouri's performance to camera commission. And before starting, some housekeeping. The event is live captioned and we want for this space to be an inclusive, accepting, welcoming, safe space for everyone. And any form of discrimination and hate speech will not be tolerated. If you need any support of any kind, please contact us in the comment section or at performingborders at gmail.com. The event is recorded and will be shared as a free uh, to access resource on the Performing Borders, LADA and Our Round websites. I also would like to thank our partners, the Live Art Development Agency, Counterpoints Art and Our Round Theatre Commons for their amazing support for this launch and beyond, and the Art Council England for funding the programme. Lavender Man is an online conversation between two friends, Tanya Kouri and Mohamed Ali Dali Agrebi, who have collaborated on three performances. Each performance happened in a different country and brought them closer. Their collaboration has changed their lives, sometimes drastically and sometimes unintentionally. The screening will be followed by a conversation between Tanya Kouri, Mohamed Ali Dali Agrebi, and Professor Harriet Hawkins, and a Q&A with you all. Please write your comments and questions in the comments box and we'll pick them up from there. Tanya Kouri is a live artist creating installations and performances focused on audience interactivity and concerned with the ethical and political potential of such encounters. She is a distinguished artist in residence of theatre and performance and director of the Centre for Human Rights and the Arts at Bard College, New York. Her work has been presented in multiple languages across six continents. Mohamed Ali Dalia Grabi is a Tunisian theatre artist and LGBTQI plus activist living in Malta. His latest creation, Would You Like to Dance with Me, was an interactive street performance with a group of asylum seekers. Dali worked on different campaigns with minority rights organisations in Tunisia and Malta. He currently acts as a committee member of Malta LGBTQ rights movements. Harry Hawkins is professor in geography at the Royal Holloway University of London. Her research is focused on the advancement of the geo-humanities, a field that sits at the intersection of geographical scholarship with arts and humanities scholarship and practice. And now I leave you to Lavander Mel. Thank you. We're gonna press record a little sort. Sorry, it's taken me too long. يعني صار لي فترة بدي أحكيك بس بتعرف انشغلنا شوي ببيروت. كيف كان بيروت وشو صار؟ يعني مثل ما قلت لك على التكست نحن we were lucky إنه we weren't injured والبيت تبعنا ما تدمر هيك في أشياء صغيرة إنه بتشوف أشياء هيك بالحيط بس we're fine um, but it was very big and uh, traumatizing and it will it will stay with us for a very long time yani lay al umra 8 shahur hala sarat aisha thawra and pandemic and inhiyar iqtisadi yani min aswa al inhiyarat al ijt al lebanon and third akbar infijar bi tarikh al I'll come visit you and Please come. I will train the dog. <laughs> With your new passport. Mabu. Yes. On. Oh. Habibi, <laughs> finally. Yes. Shu, it took them shu a day forever. Two years. Amin or Shwaya.
لحظه دي يو هاف ا مالتيز اكسنت اي كان هير رايت ناو يو لوست يور فرنش اكسنت ان انجلش حبيبي اي لوست ماي فرنش نوت اونلي ذا اكسنت اتكلم بالمالتي عشان ما يفهموش <تصفيق> بتعرف في كثير ناس بلبنان ما بيعرفوا انه المالتي انه بيسكلي عربي هو ما بيدهم المالتيين ما يعرفوش ان ريزيستونس قويه لما تقول انه المالتي هو العربي ما نعرفش ما بندمش ان جنرال يعني لما اشوف البيكتشر فروم فروم اباف It's nice. Um, um, sad, eh? Sometimes I say I regret asking for asylum. لأنه ما فيك ترجع تونس. Yes. اشتاق للشغل ال site specific. شغل انه بيطول يعني مثل اللي اشتغلناه وقت تعرفنا انا وياك بتونس الفيديو س... له علاقه بالسايت الفيديو تبعك عم بيقطش ثانيه ها الفيديو تبعك عم بيقطش اه سوري بعد عم بيقطش هلا لا انه فجاه صرنا عم نشتغل كل يوم مع هيدي الكوميونتي آه، نتعرف عليها نتعرف على المدينه نت... يعني هيدا النوع من الشغل كثير كثير مشتقت له مشتاق لهيدا آه، للناس بصراحه وقد ايه كنا انه هيك قراب من بعض وننام ونقوم وناكل ونرقص وم... انه هيدا ما في منه هلا You still have them? عندي اها عندي البروبس اللي استعملناهم البروبس وعندي الساوند سيستم وعندي عندي الكاربتس اه ريلي عتاب الزهر ارض الوطن عرض الوطن Oh, the boat drivers. Look at your boyfriend. I love watching it really fast. He's so pretty. He is. Did you love him in the show or before the show or after the show? Um, Everybody before. loved him in the show. <laughs> Look how pretty he is. Before you loved before, him? Before, in the show and after the show. <laughs> جيت على اساس اسيستنت طلعت بيرفورمر ارتست اسيستنت وطلبت لي شو بايد بمال <تصفيق> يعني فتنا بشي وطلعنا بشي مختلف تتذكر هيدا من الريهرسل هون هون بعد ما صار عندك اكسنت مالتي عندك فولدر اسمه تانيا؟ يس انا عندي فولدر اسمه تالي على فكره. ليتني اومن هيك. او ماي جاد شو كان حلو هالمكان. هيدا الجمهور لاحظ انه البرفورمنس فوق. اه شفتني هيدا 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 انت فوق بيتك اها وات هابن تو لورينزو؟ لورينزو هلا في المانيا طلب لجوء
يعني how to say it it was like a moment that changed my life and a police they came to my workshop with the children of the neighborhood they took me I didn't understand anything they didn't even let me walk so they grabbed me and put me in a, in a car in front of everyone went to my house search everything take everything humiliating kind of in front of the neighborhood then going back underground not knowing the time where you are and what you are doing here questions for me it was super scary so i will i was always thinking about it and it changed my life also so yeah عندك صور من الشغل اللي عملناه مع بعض بلبنان؟ Wait, do you remember this desk? Oh. <laughs> you are sitting this here, desk. I'm sitting here. <laughs> Digitizing 5,000 data and thousand. Look, all the letters Letters here. from all over the world. يعني توقعت كل شيء الا اتهام بالارهاب بس المشكله شوف الفرق يعني بين الليترز تبع لندن اللي وصلوا وانه الدليفري مان كيم اند كول مي اند هي جيف ات تو مي لايك هاند باي لايك دايركتلي قول بعت لك اياهم من لندن يس بس ذا وان فروم ليبنان ات واز لايك ا سسبيشس ايه ايه لانه نحن بالعالم العربي ما بنوثق ببعض هي مشكلتنا انه جاي من لندن حيكون انه قاطعين على البوليس جاي من لبنان ويمكن لانه الخط على سوريا انه على حدود سوريا انه في عالم فوت وتطلع و... بس يو ديد ان اميزنج جوب وذ ات ثانك يو اي ويش يو كود سي ذات انستليشن شوف على شو تعبت يعني تعبت <تصفيق> وعتقلت <تصفيق> ورعبك البوليس ومن وراء لا طلبت لجوء بمالطا كله من وراء هالانستليشن يعني ما بعرف قد ايه حزينه بصراحه بتعرف ريلي ان ذيس فولدر اي هاف لايك ذيس ايمج ذات ريمايند مي اولويز فروم يوم اللي هذا اليوم اللي اعتقلت فيه ودخلوا على الفيسبوك تبعي وشافوا كل شيء اه ايه هن لانه طلبوا طلبوا الباسورد جبر طب... بتعطيهم الباسورد صح؟ باسورد تبع الفيسبوك تبع الايميل تبع اللابتوب التليفون كل شيء وكانوا راح يحتجزوا بال... يحتجزوا شو؟ كانوا راح يحتجزوا اللابتوبس از ويل بس المحامي كان كثير هيك ايه بس احتجزوا الليترز يس ليترز يعني بوكسز اوف اودينس ليتر من جاردن سبيك موجودين عند بوليس بتونس انه شو بده فيهم وانا بالانستليشن حطيت ات واز كونفسكيتد باي ذا تونيزيان بوليس انه هن لانه ذي كولابوريتد وذ اس لازم حطهم بالكريدت اليكسا كونكت اليكسا اليكسا دالي يعني ايش يعني ويسترن دريم؟ مش لا بتساعدني بتقرا الايميلز بتجاوب على الايميلز واو بتقرا لي الكالندر تبعي شو في شو ما في واو بتذكرني اه بتذكرني الوقت تبع الباستا واو توقعت كل شيء منك انا انه راديكال اكتيفست تونس كذا جاي من مدري من وين من اخر تونس وعمل حياته وهيك فجاه صار عايش باوروبا اليكسا دورين الموسيقى ذيس از بريليانت 
علاش انت؟ واي مي واي مي انه بس تعرفت عليك تغيرت حياتي اول شيء صرت اشرب لافندر تي هدول اللافندر اللي انت جبت لي ما بحياتي بحياتي فعرفت انه لافندر بينشرب وكل ما اشربهم هيك بتذكر السوق هذا البلاطه السوق كله سبايسز وهيك وبس تعرفنا بس كمان شفت حالي فيك انه حدا شاب منه جاي جاي من مطرح شوي كونسرفاتيف من مكان متواضع من عائلة متواضعة ما له علاقة بالفن وبال بالعمل السياسي و بس شقيت طريقك لوحدك وعندك هيك كثير ايدياليزم بالشغل وبالتعاطي وكمان رابط القضايا مع بعضهم مش انه هيدي القضية وخلص يعني بس اكشلي بتعرف هذيك المرة سألتني انه ليش قررت تجيب بيبي ما كنت متأكدة انه بدي اجيب بيبي بس بعتقد جزء منه تعرف عليك فتح لي هيك شعور بالامومه كثير ما كان عندي اياه قبل يعني شعور تعلق بناس ما انه مرتبط ببس الصداقه وما انه مرتبط ب عاده انه في يكون سكشوال وين يو ميت سم بيبل اذر جست كوليك كذا علاقتي في كمان فتح لي اشياء هيك ماذرلي فيلين كثير غريبه ف <تصفيق> وأشياء تانية يعني كمان هيك أنا بحس اتصالحت مع بالشغل مع بعض وبالحديث كله وهيك حسيت حالي إنه أنا كمان اتصالحت مع ماي أون كويرنس يعني مش هلا أدو اتس نوت لايك كومينج أوت فيديو لك بس عم تسمع ليل عم بتتنق خلص لازم تجيبها أسألها بجيبها فرجيك إياها قد إيه كبيرة عم بتشوفي الكلب؟ هذا بوبي شفتي؟ خلينا نحط لها موسيقى تسمع؟ Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining us for um, the premiere of Lavender Man. My name's Harriet Hawkins, and I'd like to begin by saying a really big thank you to Tanya and Dali for taking the time in the midst of all that's going on to produce such a heartfelt, sensitive, and wonderful piece of work. I'm really excited and honored to have the chance to develop the conversation with both of you tonight about this work. And of course, with everyone who's joined us from around the world to enjoy the piece and also take part in the discussion. I promise not to monopolize it. I'm gonna start though by leading a conversation between these two wonderful artists for about kind of 40, 50 minutes. And then there'll be time for questions afterwards. Now, in order to pose those questions, if I can direct those of you um, listening to us and watching us to look to the top right of your screen right now, you'll see a little black white outline of a speech bubble. If you click that, it'll open a chat window. And in that chat window, you'll be able to type your questions. So after we've had our conversation, I'll turn to address some of those. Now, I'd like to take the chance, if I may, to introduce our conversation by briefly reflecting on my own history with both of you, um, not least because I think it will help the audience understand why exactly I'm here as a geographer. So, as I said, I'm a geographer and my work sits at the intersection of geographical themes of place, the environment, urban space and social justice. 
So when Tanya and I met many years ago now, it felt like a really, really natural fit. And I have extremely fond memories of sitting in a coffee shop in London, having those kinds of really exciting exchanges that always seem to characterise that moment where you know you've met someone who you really hope to know for years and years to come. So Tanya has, um, what I'm sure a number of you know now, is over a decade of work at the intersection of live art, activism, social justice, from her work with Dictaphone Group, including work such as The Sea Is Mine, exploring rights to space in Beirut, to her work Garden Speak, which I was lucky enough to get to watch to evolve over a number of years. If you don't know this work, um, Garden Speak creates an extraordinarily powerful space in which as an audience members, we get to listen to the oral histories of 10 people killed at the beginning of the Syrian uprising and then buried in their gardens. I urge you to seek Garden Speak and Tanya's other work out on her website. And of course, eventually Garden Speak will hopefully start retouring again and then you'll be able to see it in person. Now, one of the many extraordinary aspects of Garden Speak was the letters that Tanya invited you as an audience member to compose to the families and friends of those who have died as part of that installation. And it's these letters which of course form the basis for the installation tell me what i can do and are of course integral to the evolution of tanya and dahlia's relationship and this piece that we've just seen now it was in the midst of some of the research i was doing to explore the very intricate relationships between the discipline of geography and artistic practice that i was lucky enough to travel to tunis on tanya's invitation to observe the evolution of the site-specific piece unmarry us which Tanya was developing for the Dream City Festival there. And it was in Tunis that I first met Dali, who so profoundly shaped my, mine, and I would go so far as to presume Tanya's experiences of Tunis. The snaking streets, passages and markets of the old Medina that he was kind enough to show us around, but also the experiences of activism, past and present in those streets, that he was kind enough and generous enough to share with us. What unfolded for me over the next week or so, and for Tanya, Dali and the other collaborators, was, um, was this kind of incredible generosity of exchange and the most incredible experience for me of watching the final stages of a piece of live art develop. What emerged in front of me were the moving stories of intimate violence and the role of space and social relations in both enabling but crucially resisting this intimate violence. But it was also a series of relationships that evolved, relationships between the women who were involved in telling the stories, between the LGBTQI plus activists in Tunis, and of course, as we'll hear, between Tanya and Dali. What was clear from my slightly odd position as both an insider and an outsider to this work was this real sense of collaboration and the multiple forms that it took, not least, of course, between the two of you, Dali and Tanya. So to start our conversation, I thought I'd ask you both to reflect, if you can, on your memories of Unmarry Us and your first memories of each other as a start point for the evolving of that friendship that has, of course, brought us to Lavender Man. Tanya, can I invite you to respond? Thank you. Thank you, Harriet. It's such a pleasure to actually be together. I know it's not as fun as being together in the streets of uh, Medina and Tunis or in any room, actually, but it's good enough for me to be um, in a reunion together, the three of us chatting. Um, and I wanna also take that, uh, this opportunity to thank uh, um, Performing Borders and Lada for um, joining us together and giving me this chance to actually do a little reunion uh, commission with Bali. Um, <sighs> thinking about when we met, um, in, in, in Tunis, um, it was actually very, very quick um, friendship that, um, that just happened very naturally together. And people who work usually in performance and people who have uh, studied theater know this uh, feeling when you're like in a, in, a, in a studio together or in a rehearsal room and you just click. You click on a different level. You click uh, in physically, you click... Uh, mentally, energy-wise. Uh, this, of course, wasn't um, uh, a theater or a studio. It was the, the actual city. But we very quickly, I remember um, just walking in the street and just felt very natural that we are team together. And on the same day, we had um, a dinner with a group of artists. And one of the artists asked me if I brought my younger brother with me from Lebanon, <laughs> pointing at Bali. And I said, no, he was my, uh, he's my um, 
artist assistant allocated by Dream Festival, who is um, who put together an international artist with a local younger artist who would work as an artist assistant to help them put up um, the work uh, in the city. But it just stayed with me that it felt like we were family immediately. Ali, did you want to <laughs> respond? Uh, to add on this, yes. <laughs> um, so to start, like, thank you so much for like this opportunity and everything. Like long time I didn't work with Tanya, and it was like usual something like the idea very quick and <laughs> perfect. So. Um, <laughs> Yes, when we first met, I was thinking like, because they told me the name of the artist, so I was doing my research and looking and they was like, oh, she's famous, what I would do with her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was thinking like this. And then when we, when I met her, like when she entered, like she came from the airport, it was like very natural. Hello, and we started like kissing and we went, I, I took like the luggage, we went, she rested a bit, then we went for, for, for lunch and the conversation just started like that of all our life and everything without even knowing each other. And even like a lot of other artists and artist assistants, they were kind of... Uh, jealous, like, they were jealous. Jealous, they yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them they asked like why our assistants are like not like this <laughs> and they was asking the same like because because it, it was feeling like it felt very very natural with Tanya to be like this and to be part of the family even after you know I wonder if um, both of you can track through the importance of that idea of collaboration for your work obviously Unmarry Us was such a collaborative piece with you know, so many different communities involved in that collaboration alongside the both of you. But then also there was that wonderful moment in Lavender Man where you're like, oh yes, and the police, they collaborated too. And I thought that really kind of drew that richness of what collaboration could be out. So I wondered if you could talk through how you maybe think through collaboration and maybe track us through how that happened in Unmarry Us, just so that kind of everyone can kind of know a bit more about that work that formed that relationship. Yeah, so with site-specific work, um, collaboration is uh, key because uh, often it's about looking at the politics of that space. And when you're looking at the politics and history and the design of a certain space, you're looking at who uses that space. Do they feel welcome in that space? Do they feel um, abandoned by that space? Um, I wanted to, uh, in Unmarry Us, to put on a wedding party on the rooftops of uh, El Medina, a wedding party that will involve activists from the LGBT community, but also women from uh, Beiti um, Women's Shelter. And these women are often kind of hidden in El Medina because they're hiding from their abusers, but also because of how um, the shelter is, is, is kind of... Um, uh, 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 hidden within the mazes or the streets of uh, El Medina. Um, so I, I actually wanted to put these people out on, on the rooftops uh, very clearly and uh, tell them, instead of them telling the story of abuse and of uh, um, uh, injustice, actually working almost like uh, geographers and urban researchers and tell us the story of uh, Medina, uh, how it developed to be like that. And by hearing that story, we understand as audience that the, the design um, of El Medina and how um, the rooftops are linked with each other, how the streets are so small that you feel safe in them, um, you will make that link by yourself that um, actually this place that will look very harsh for outsider or will look quite conservative can act as a refuge for uh, marginalized communities. Uh, but it was very important for me that these people ha um, who might have been, um, who are uh, marginalized by the society some of them abused by people, 
to feel that they, uh, their dignity is maintained in that work and that um, they have agency in how they present themselves. Uh, so that's why uh, collaborating with them uh, is very important. So it's not about just me directing them, um, uh, choreographing them uh, in a way that they don't have a say or they don't bring what they have uh, to the place, but actually to work from um, their interest and their energy and their skills. Uh, Dali can probably talk more about that, but it's just everything developed from what we have around us. So we just happened to have a friend who was always with us, who's a cook. So, so food was, became part of it. Um, uh, Dali uh, uh, was supposed to be uh, assistant, but because of um, who he is and where uh, his house is uh, and the stories that he tell, he became part of the work um, uh, himself. So for me, it's very important uh, to, to collaborate um, in, um, uh, especially in site specific performances and to work with uh, the team uh, rather than force uh, an already um, an already already developed work and finished work on uh, on a team. Uh, I want to add, like I was really fascinated by the flexibility of Tanya with the work, because it's not an artist that she came with an idea and she wanted to realize it there. But the work started slowly, slowly. She started her research. She started meeting people on different subjects, not on one. And we have conversations after and we see what what is happening in Medina itself. And like even the presentation of the of the actual idea, it was a surprise for me because <laughs> the production team was always asking me to see the budget and everything, what Tanya want to do. And me, I'm like, I don't know. We're still meeting people. We don't know exactly what to do. But like suddenly in the, pro in the presentation of the idea, she just starts speaking about a wedding on the roof. I start laughing at first. I was thinking that she's joking. But then I was like, no, she's serious. And I started listening. So yes, this is the idea. But it, it was like this. And even with, with the community that we were working with, it's a vulnerable community. And slowly, slowly, the work developed. Um, we had a text that we, when we, like, when she saw that it's not needed anymore, she just changed everything. Even the, the idea of the whole performance changed in the last five minutes. And we did one rehearsal be before we start the show. So this kind of work, it was very flexible for the women working in the performance and also for the story that she wanted to, to, to tell and to, um, to, and she did this with all the, the work that we, in every city. <laughs> Dali, your, uh, <laughs> this is uh, with, uh, <laughs> you're uh, 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 telling people secrets. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being really very profoundly impressed by, um, I kind of arrived and I think you had kind of like three or four weeks to go before the performance. And so it, it was sort of coming together but there were still lots of things that were being, that were really quite up in the air. And it was really, really fascinating to watch the way that the, um, the kind of all the different groups of people involved became such a central part of evolving the way that the final piece kind of inhabited and explored that space and really working, as you say, Tanya, with those skills, but also Dali, how it was so profoundly shaped by your skills and your knowledge too. It was really, really intriguing to kind of watch um, I'd also, Dali, like to hear you talk through maybe how some of the things that you kind of saw happen and things that you kind of witnessed in those kinds of, in that collaboration and its unfolding may have influenced the work that you've been doing in Malta, because that, that piece, Will You Dance With Me, with the Insight Asylum Seekers, I'd really love to hear, you know, how that unfolded. I thought you were like... I was so impressed by the work of Tanya and how she worked with communities. And uh, to start, like, would you like to dance with me? It was an idea that just with who I want to work, you know, as now as a refugee coming from, like, I'm, I'm gay, uh, refugee. So there is a specific kind of 
group and community that live here as LGBT uh, migrants. Um, so there is certain kind of intersectionality between these two groups that they make people more vulnerable, um, being uh, not accepted from their own communities as being gays and not being accepted from the local communities for being migrants. So um, this kind of idea brought me to why we don't interact with people and see, it's, it's a kind of experimentation, what will happen there and then, also taking in consideration that like some people were having some difficulties with the language and everything. So we thought about recording uh, all their story and um, kind of what they want to share. And basically people, they went in the street in Valletta, in the capital city in front of the parliament, and they are asking people to dance with them. And people who accept will listen to a song from like a cultural song from that uh, like someone's country and um, then they will hear a story and it will be a very intimate moment together through headphones uh, linked to each other it's only them who hear all this also the idea of awkwardness being dancing with someone uh, like a stranger in the street with no one hearing what you are hearing so it's kind of uh, that kind of feeling uh, also we worked on and it was uh, uh, in the same day it was the uh, they were like signing a petition to make uh, 3rd October as an international day for uh, refugees um, so that was the work and they really built on what I learned from Tanya because she always tell me working with a community is not easy, even though you are a part of that community, you know, and you have to understand and don't make your ideas as everything, you know, you always adapt and collaborate with others, not it's like a kind of direction. Thank you. If I can throw that kind of back, I guess, to you, Tanya, and say, you know, what what do you think you've kind of taken forward as broad as broader lessons from the kind of collaborative intersections you've had with Dali? Because obviously we've got some of the kinds of details of how the collaborations went forward into other works to um, to kind of discuss in more detail. But those kinds of broader lessons of that collaboration is very much a kind of two way thing. Um, it'd be really interesting to hear you reflect on that from your perspective. Um. I think uh, that that piece was very crucial to me on on Marius because um, it was ideal in many ways. Like I, you know, the ideal situation for an artist who is interested in site specific performance is to work in a place that they love to be in, uh, with the community that they relate to, uh, with friends. Uh, so obviously, we we started we didn't know each other, but we ended up being friends. So everything about that was a, an ideal situation. And since then I have been trying to kind of find other ideal situation or try to think about any space and any group of people as this could be the beginning of a long-term relationship, uh, personal and um, uh, professional. Um, I actually learned a lot uh, from Dali, obviously in, in, uh, in the city because we ended up uh, um, collaborating with a lot of his friends and uh, his community and his friends uh, changed how the work uh, was gonna uh, be if, if, if he wasn't uh, working with me. Uh, but working with Dali, because he's um, someone who has such a fresh uh, take on everything, he's still young, he uh, is starting his career, um, He's very, uh, um, uh, he notices things and he uh, makes links between various, uh, um, he, he has, he, he's very attentive to details. And because we've worked together a few times already, so he kind of shows me how I work in a way that I'm not uh, very aware of. 
uh, which is uh, uh, very nice uh, for an artist. So he always repeats that I work super fast, which I knew about myself, but he's like, you do things in five minutes, you finish scenes in one minute, you change everything on one day. And I was like, oh, is that weird? I thought everybody worked like that. So now that's why I keep telling him, stop telling everybody. <laughs> it's, it's exposing me. Um, so it's just, uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm learning all of these things about myself and obviously uh, about uh, um, uh, about that space where we were together. Um, I've learned that from Sally. Thank you. I think it's precisely some of those textures and details of the collaborations and how they've evolved and the nature of that friendship that I found a really, really powerful element of Lavender Man because you know, a lot of my work has been trying to think through how um, collaborations and intersections of different bodies of knowledge and different forms of kind of practice can happen. Sometimes it's geography and different forms of art. Sometimes it might be different kinds of communities. And I think one of the things I found really striking about the account of collaboration that Lavender Man offers was that it kind of really draws out all the different kinds of aspects of collaboration as both a kind of public thing, because obviously you're making aspects of your collaboration public and some of the kinds of points where you've both clearly had to confront quite difficult things that have emerged as a result of that collaboration, but also things that have gone on to be very positive. And collaboration in this context is both very public, but also obviously so private and so intimate, but also built through those really everyday little kinds of details and practices like the drinking of the lavender tea, which of course then becomes echoed in the title, which I just think is a really lovely, a really lovely kind of testament to that kind of daily ins and outsness of how relationships kind of form. And also, I think one of the things I was also really struck by when I was watching Lavender Man was a phrase I've been thinking about quite a lot recently by a theorist called Judith Butler, who basically says kind of in relating, we become undone. And if we don't, we miss something. So the way that to kind of relate and to care and to form relationships, whether collaborative or not, is about that kind of vulnerability. And, and if we don't risk coming undone by each other, we kind of miss something. And I thought one of the things I think I was so struck by was the bravery of confronting some of the challenging aspects of collaboration that, that Lavender Man kind of draws out, certainly for me as someone who, who kind of knows you both. And I wondered if you could reflect on how it felt kind of exposing some of those kinds of difficult, tricky questions about collaboration, but also just the kind of intimacies of a relationship and the kinds of care and love that you feel for each other on screen, because that was, you know, it was so powerful. Dali, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, when, when Tanya first sent me <clears throat> the idea, like her idea and what, what she wrote, and she sent me an email and I was reading it, uh, I ended up crying. And my boyfriend, he was like, no, 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 like what's happening? And he read, uh, read it and, but because for me, especially that, long time now I didn't see Tanya like like we didn't met now for two years and um, it's a bit heavy to just uh, kind of even the question that we asked it's not question that we asked ourselves before so it's everything new and we really discuss it at the first time there so it was something that it's um, heavy but in the same time I'm enjoying it because I'm with Tanya and I know that like sharing with her was always the thing uh, we discuss everything and we don't have kind of uh, limits and that's what I really love about our kind of relationship because it's really uh, I call her mom she's not that old to be my mom but <laughs> <laughs> but that's the idea even like the the way she asked me sometimes things to do and how to do it it's like it had to be strict so sometimes she's being <laughs> the real mom <laughs> um it's just um actually uh, as you said Harriet I think you describe it really uh, uh powerfully that um this 
a particular uh, project, Lavenderman, looking at our relationship, looking at what we miss now in the live performance, but live meeting, uh, but also looking at the ups and downs of collaboration and a very difficult uh, moment. And I felt that I was dealing with these um, uh, quite shocking moments that we went through um, together, Dali's arrest and me understanding that he was arrested because of the work that I've done and because of our collaboration and realizing that it was actually by anti-terrorist police. Like, so all over the world, this is kind of the only police that you don't want to deal with because they function outside of the law and they could do whatever, uh, they, they basically kidnapped him. So they could have just not given him back for uh, as long as they wanted. Um, so understanding the, um, uh, the responsibility and feeling that guilt related to my work. And I always knew that working on the intersection between politics and uh, live art and working with activists and working uh, with um, uh, contested events and contested spaces, put people in danger, but I was always hoping that it would be me that they would put in danger and I could deal with that because of the choice. And I always felt that I found a way to, um, uh, to maintain um, safety of people around me. Um, so that took me by, by surprise um, and, um, and it really made me question uh, whether the work is worth it, whether um, collaboration is worth it. And obviously it turned out, and I had this conversation with Dali before, like, are you sure it turned out to be good for you? Are you sure you're okay being in Malta? Are you sure? And um, so, so I, I feel that this project is asking these questions. They could be very... Um, uh, very personal to us and very uh, specific, but uh, I'm hoping that some of them are actually global and uh, um, and general to everyone who work together in collaboration. No, I think I think that question of our kind of ethical responsibility as collaborators towards each other um, is is really. I mean, I think very crucial, not only to who we are as, as humans, but then who we are, as, especially if we kind of sit in particular kinds of relationships, whether it's an art making relationship or a, a kind of research and art making relationship, those questions of what makes an appropriate and ethical collaboration is vital, especially when we're working, I think, as practitioners, as researchers and scholars with communities who in different contexts are kind of disempowered or marginalized in different kinds of ways. And I think those, those ethical questions are very, very complicated and very important to be asked ourselves. Um, I think I'd like to also pick up on something that's been a thread that's been running through both your answers to the last few sets of questions, which has been that thread that I find so powerfully within all your work, Tanya, anyway. And it's that really kind of powerful way that you bring to a certain kind of sensibility um, the intersections between the geopolitical and the intimate whether it's through kind of bodily intimate violences or whether it's through the kind of way we can track the questions of borders and how we engage with multiplicities of borders um, in a geopolitical context, in an intimate context. And obviously Lavender Man kind of brings those brings those to the fore, Dali, through your story, but also through the kind of history of those collaborations and in particular that previous one called Malta. Um, and it strikes me that obviously um, one of the reasons we're here is, is to, to talk about performing borders and questions about kind of unbordering and, and what borders mean. And, you know, I'm obviously one of those privileged people who's been, you know, relatively able to travel around the world pretty, pretty much as I wish for a number of, for, for many years. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who um, has found COVID-19 making us all consider our relationships with borders and our relationships with surveillance and obstruction, kind of being obstructed at borders in ways that perhaps many of us have been, of course, incredibly privileged not to have to think about before. 
obviously Brexit for those of us in, in Britain is raising those questions of borders in other kinds of ways too. Um, of course, for many around the world, borders are negotiating border restrictions and limits to movement and the violence that occurs there are, are sadly daily tragic, tragic, tragic issues. Um, so I kind of would really like us to spend some time thinking through that question of borders for both of you, those geopolitical borders, um, the kind of questions around nation state and nationality, but also how for you both, it powerfully seems those intersect with other kinds of borders that may be bodily, they may be about the kind of cultures and societies we live in, they may be boundaries around who we love and how we love that kind of become intersected very powerfully with those kinds of questions of the national border and the kind of geopolitical movement. So I think there's many ways that comes through in Lavender Man, but I don't know if those is, that's something that you'd be able to kind of comment, reflect on. Dali? <laughs> Uh, how, how to start? <laughs> uh, for, for me, it was always a, a problem of like borders, there is the invisible and the visible borders that we are speaking about. And in Tunisia, for example, being part of the LGBT community is being like uh, condemned with three years of prison. It's like this criminal who is just walking in the street. So you are waiting for your day kind of so you are in a kind of prison with borders but it's invisible for the moment then um when i came here to malta and i asked for asylum it's another procedure it's um what the law says is something and what you live on everyday life it's it's another thing so waiting for example for my passport passport for two years and and a half it was something like illegal from the side of the government. It have to be for in six months. But every day you ask and you don't know when. And this is another border that you don't really see. But you are waiting for something, but you don't know when you will get it. When you will get that kind of freedom of moving from like a, a small, really small island, you know? So borders can be really like you touch it you feel it as now in Malta as like a small island with sea around or you can feel it in 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 the way of everyday life how it how it goes being uh, a Tunisian here and with this movement of uh, like there is a big um, how to say it uh, a big wave of uh, hate speech that is happening now, seeing people quarantined in the sea, uh, in boats, and they cannot enter the island. Seeing all this around, it's very scary kind of, seeing these borders, it's going like, they are building other kind of layers for these borders, not only the passport, not only the visas, but more things to it. and. It's very scary on these moments now, especially with the COVID. It's a like uh, uh, it's a it's a it's an argument now that they can use easily to stop people to make more borders to people. Yeah, I read somewhere that um, the official way that they measure global migration, which is by the the kind of granting of residence permits. They, they've noted that in the first half of 2020, that fell by half. And of course, that's only kind of formal migration. And we obviously know, you know, as you say, very sadly, that um, the, the kind of condition for migrants and refugees is, is so much worse under COVID-19. So yeah, it's clearly a, a kind of issue that, that is drawing another lens onto kind of questions of global mobilities and immobilities. Tanya, did you want to kind of respond to no, I just want to say that I dream of a day when I don't work on borders anymore. In, in a way, I feel that maybe all of my work has been about borders in a way or another. Borders, uh, yeah, invisible, intimate, cities as borders, the sea as border, uh, uh, humans as borders. And I just really uh, hope that one day we don't 
focus on that anymore, but it's um, it's not looking likely. I think it's going to get worse now with the um, rise of xenophobia around the world, the uh, rise of right-wing politics again, very populist but also um, uh, with the economic collapse that be, that been happening caused or uh, made worse by uh, the pandemic, I think we're gonna have another wave of closed borders, lots of deaths on borders again and again, uh, and we're gonna have to be forced to discuss uh, the right to movement, which seems like such a, an obvious, a natural thing to do, to be able to move, to be able to expand horizons, meet people. Um, and just uh, because I feel that and I'm already uh, nostalgic for it, um, uh, I, I felt like part of Lavender Man is to have this little, um, almost no, no, being a little bit nostalgic to uh, being able to meet people around the world the word and becoming friends with them um, and I feel that this uh, now we can't do it right now because of the pandemic but I feel that it's gonna become harder and harder with the cuts in the arts due to the pandemic with the inability to to move uh, sadly um, I feel that the word's gonna get uh, like smaller and smaller and um, we're gonna find ourselves uh, already um, reminiscing to uh, the times we were able to uh, meet and become friends around the world. Yeah, I think it's it's really interesting you say that because when I was um, watching Lavender Man, I was I was thinking kind of really similar things, and I was also thinking the kind of about how I felt that one of the things that Lavender Man also posed provocatively for me and part of the way I think if I can describe it like this, it seemed to use Zoom as a medium, if that's not a really horrible thing to say, um, in terms of like, you know, Zoom as a medium seems like, yeah. Um, but I just felt that one of the things I kind of found fascinating was there was um, a, a geographer historian years ago called Francis Fukuyama who talked about the end of history and the end of geography and that globalization and the internet was mean meant we no longer had to kind of ask some of these questions about you know kind of nation state based borders and boundaries because you know this was the world you know everything was becoming so connected and that the internet has been kind of prophesized as another kind of tool of this kind of end of geography and I think I was very struck when I was watching Lavender Man about the way that Though there sort of seemed to be a kind of mobilization of a number of kind of tools that could make us think of Zoom as a sort of the site of Zoom, I guess, as a kind of iteration of site specific work for, for a pandem for pandemic times, where, you know, the way that you used the gestures of movement on the screen, where you mirrored each other or copied each other, was so powerful, especially because the first time I watched the piece, I didn't have the um, translation and I don't speak Arabic. So I was I was not able to understand a lot of what you said, apart from the kind of points where you broke into English or, or occasionally French, and then I could kind of pick things up. But that made me really focus on the gestures. And it made me really, really conscious of the kind of infrastructures of, of Zoom as a kind of site in which to make work and the way that the menus kind of came up and gave a glimpse into your computer, Dali, with your folder called Tanya. Um, and so I wondered if you could kind of reflect on, on, on kind of what it was like to make a piece of performance work when both of you are used to working with kind of live communities that use the internet in this way and that use kind of Zoom as a tool and, and, and how that felt like. And if you even thought about it in that way, or if I'm, I'm kind of projecting my geographical interest in the sites of the kind of production and consumption of work onto, onto your piece here. Thank you for that. I um, actually made me realize that I, I worked with Zoom as a site without really being aware of it, without really thinking that this is a site specific piece. But um, it was a decision to work on Zoom because of, um, because of how we use it to check with each other, but how to use it would work. And uh, just like a site, how it affects um, uh, how you relate to others or other performers and how you uh, perform the work, I felt that Zoom actually um, uh, indicated or led us to, uh, 
to how we connected with each other. For example, the fact that it has these uh, whiteboards so you could draw on it and becomes a reveal. Oh, what is he gonna ask me? Uh, the fact that I've noticed in Zoom that people kind of, I, I personally notice where people are looking and how they, um, they move their body. So this um, affected that um, exercise that we tried together also, let's kind of like move differently or try to mirror or not mirror each other. Um, and uh, different things that we tested, even with the virtual background that we don't end up um, uh, using. Um, we've also used captions. Uh, so it was actually like a site and a site that we recently discovered uh, because of the pandemic. I mean, I've used it before, but it was never like um, uh, such a, a part uh, of my daily life. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right that it was a site that uh, just like any site, it um, uh, indicated how we work together and it uh, affected the work. I was also very struck by the ways that things that we're probably all so familiar with now from Zoom and Teams or Google Hangouts or whatever, the kind of the, in, the way that the domestic kind of comes into spaces it might not normally come into and the kind of are we on yet? Are you muted? Are you not muted? And the kind of breaking down of the internet becomes kind of part of the conditions of how we kind of understand understand the work. Dali, I wonder what your thoughts were, because I was, I think obviously Tanya makes it clear, but I was also very struck by that kind of Alexa moment as well, which speaks to another kind of element of those technologies and the kind of normalcy of everyday life kind of coming in in a particular way. Yes, like I believe that the pandemic put us in, in a situation where we have to explore with like all the technology around us as artists, because, um, like, to be honest, the intersectionality between different um, uh, uh, different elements of the art, the media, the um, like uh, editing a video and these kind of things, usually we don't think about it when you are, we are working uh, in live art uh, and theater and uh, music or uh, and different uh, things. But now in this pandemic, we are stuck at home and we need something to work. And really like we need art to, to kind of feel uh, our existence uh, as artists. So uh, working with these technologies, um, always there is constraints within, but there is also a lot of things to do and to, to, and to create and really like, um, after when Tanya was sending me the drafts of the videos and uh, of the film and seeing the change and the editing part and everything, it was amazing for me. It's, it's a piece of art it's on itself. It's like a work of art on itself, uh, seeing the changing between like the first material and what, what, what came to it and what add to it and this um, animation and things. It's very, it's very interesting. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for the conversation. I think I'm now going to, with our last kind of 20 minutes or so, take the opportunity to avail ourselves of another kind of form of, of the technology, which is to um, take questions from audience in a kind of disembodied way. So um, thank you very much for those of you who've been putting your questions in the chat. For those of you who haven't had a chance yet, if I can remind you, it should be a little white outline of a speech bubble in the top right of your viewing screen. If you click that, you'll open a chat bar, and in that you can pose some questions. And I should confess that the Performing Borders team have um, fantastically set up a system whereby I have questions um, on a separate document. So I'm now going to definitely perform the sideways zoom eyes to look at my other document in order to read out some of these questions and pose them to you. So I'm going to start with one from um, Florence, which is to both of you, and it's a question that I was really also wanting to pose to you, so it's really great. Um, she asks, do you think the pandemic has um, shown us how arbitrary and blurred borders are and how we're never in our own universal space and that what we do always affects someone else? And I guess linked to that as well, I'd be interested if you can reflect on how the pandemic has 
kind of asked us to think about the sustainability of our actions as kind of artists and practitioners. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, repeat the first part of the question to myself. You want me to repeat it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you think the pandemic has shown us how arbitrary and blurred borders are and how we're never in our own universe or space and how what we do always affects someone? Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think... I think that we already knew that, but the pandemic just made it like everything, you know, the pandemic just made things much uh, bigger. Um, so here in Lebanon, for example, we've had so many difficult uh, uh, difficulties uh, like uh, a total economic collapse, uh, political corruption, and the pandemic made it worse. And I think our relationship to borders uh, the pandemic is just kind of uh, putting a, a huge magnifier, the precarity of work, especially of art workers. Again, the pandemic has made it much uh, worse. So I think this is what's been happening um, recently, if, if, if I understood the, the question uh, right. Yeah, no, I think so. Also, from my perspective, I don't know about you both, but I've also become really aware of my body in a really extended way. So all mm. those kinds of discussions of what happens when you sneeze and you're shedding virus and are you shedding virus and the kind yeah, of totally. sense that one may be contagious that break yeah. down the kind of boundaries of your relationship to kind of other people <laughs> in different kinds of ways and those awkward pavement dances that have become a kind of factor of life where everyone's like oh which way is everyone going Dali I don't know how's it been in Malta in Malta is is, uh, is like the same as uh, in the rest of the world like uh, but thinking about Malta as a really small country it's like it's everything is accentuated like we feel it more because like maximum we will go 20 kilometer and we are in the end of the of the island so it's not like there is nothing to do even in your own country so uh, um, traveling is was an issue when everything stopped and everything and really people they start thinking of if now I cannot just travel to Sicily so people who were stuck for all their lives in their countries how they are feeling and how their thoughts go like um, about borders and about all these kind of things. Also, at a certain point, we were stuck at home, so it's another border. Going out in the street it was uh, something that we couldn't do. So it's a kind of, the pandemic helped this, but in the same time, it spread this kind of, uh, it's like it, it, uh, this hate speech of fear of the other. And as you said, like, we, we, we start being afraid of anyone who sneezes or cough in the street and thinking about even people who are coming to the country and uh, uh, this stigma on, on everyone who travels that he's carrying the, the virus and he's spreading it to other places. And every time it's about the foreigners who are bringing the, the virus to us and like send them back to their countries or don't let them in. So this, the idea is becoming stronger also uh, from, from the both ways. Great, thank you. Um, I've got a question here from Kate, um, um, particularly to Tanya. A lot of your work, Kate says, revolves around international collaboration. Do you feel that the pandemic has stifled that or opened it up further with performance moving into digital spaces? Um, I haven't collaborated with anyone yet who I haven't collaborated with already. <laughs> so I think because I've felt that I uh, mainly miss my friends all over the world. Um, when I had the chance to do digital pieces, I've collaborated with Basil, uh, as uh, many of you know him, Basil Zada, who I worked with on As Far As My Fingertips Take Me. 
Um, so I collaborated with him again and I collaborated with Dali again. I just felt like um, I needed to preserve these connection that I had because I miss my friends that I miss uh, that part of my life and these conversation that I already started. I think if we uh, stay much longer in this situation, uh, perhaps, yeah, it will allow me um, to collaborate with people that uh, perhaps I can't, um, I can't meet around the world for various season, uh, reasons. For example, I, as a Lebanese, I'm not allowed to go into occupied Palestine. For example, I could do a digital piece uh, with people there, for example, just giving you um, an example, but uh, uh, I haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think there's, there's, yeah, possibilities, but also, as you say, using the kind of opportunity to also kind of use digital spaces to, to reform connections that already exist in different kinds of ways. Um, Dali, there's a question here um, for you from Marianne, who's asking, can you talk about the areas of difference between working as an artist in exile and then work within home communities? Um, working in, like, uh, at home, it's like you feel you feel you know everything, kind of, you know. So you know where to go and who to ask and these kind of things. There is no um, difficulties in your resources and in your research that you can do. Um, working here, it's very different because uh, you cannot work without knowing people, without getting to have a community in the beginning, without getting to know how things go so you start from the beginning is that everything and now uh, like, uh, i like i i'm having a ba in performing art so i'm i'm even like helping to know and to know people in the industry and to know people around me so that's the difference mainly between working here and there <laughs> Great, um, thank you. Um, Bobby has a question for both of you. Um, he says, this is a great com global conversation. Um, building on what you're saying about the pandemic, I'm wondering if you're finding new opportunities for global so solidarity with other artists and communities. Tanya, you've already kind of nodded towards how that might work for you. Dali, do you think that's something that you've been able to take advantage of yet? Or Tanya, is there anything else you'd like to add on that? I just uh, um, I just think that now uh, we have a chance, we have an opportunity in the art world to think about where, uh, how, if we can reimagine uh, our industry, our work culture, um, and if we start from solidarity with each other, I think it's very important. We are at the moment now when governments are asking us to prove our uh, worth to society. And this is a very dangerous and completely unfair uh, situation to be in because uh, let them uh, try to be uh, without art all their lives and, uh, and then come back to us. <laughs> so um, I feel if we start uh, at least in solidarity and understand that uh, the most precarious people amongst us are the ones that usually are made redundant first, are put on the side first, uh, people, uh, especially um, uh, workers, uh, art workers of color, uh, we've seen venues around the world balance their budgets uh, on uh, the back of these people. And um, we should just resist that and we should be in solidarity with each other and understand how we could reimagine all together um, a post-pandemic world that is uh, build on uh, a more equal and uh, fair um, work ethics. Dali, was there anything you wanted to add or, because I've got another question here about the local scene in Malta to ask if that, <laughs> so I'll, I'll move us from yes. the global to the local. So um, <laughs> Julianne asks, being a Maltese artist who lives abroad, I look at the art theatre scene in Malta and feel like it can tend to sometimes feel restricted. Um, what's been your experience and take on the local scene and the funding that you, you found there? Um, how to say it, but like the local scene in Malta, it's, it's very limited, yes. 
but also it's it's uh, we say it's a green space so you can work on it and you can uh, involve something and you can experiment uh, Malta like have too many beautiful places and uh, sites and things that you can work on usually the work what is done here it's like the classic theater um, the dance the uh, opera these kind of like pantomime and these kind of things but um, like now new movements of like young artists that they are working on site specific performances or on live performances interactive with audience and things and this is i think what i saw here after valletta 2018 i saw that it's a, a new thing that start in malta um, and it's always um it gives you time to experiment yourself and to see and also to collaborate with others uh, outside of malta That's really exciting to just to, to hear about that kind of that green space as such a kind of yeah really interesting metaphor and fertile metaphor um so dale has a question which i think is a kind of really nice one as we start to kind of wind into our final kind of 10 minutes he asks i'm an artist just starting my career and i'm often overwhelmed with knowing where to start can you both please share some advice on what happened on what helped you when you first began creating art and performance so top tips would be would be welcome um, I like when uh, people ask this question because obviously it's very different for everybody. There is no rules, but uh, it always helps to hear other people what works for them. Uh, what worked for me is to always find your people wherever you are, like find people that uh, you can trust, that you can collaborate with and try to think that you are part of a, a community, but also part of a, um, of a clique like people who would support each other, would uh, uh, watch each other's work, uh, um, help each other. And it's very important because you can't do it alone. Whatever medium it is, you can't do it alone. And, um, and then when you're, you're actually uh, working together, you end up setting a culture by yourself, a culture that people want to be part of, uh, a movement of sorts. Uh, and another um, tip <laughs> would be that uh, not to compromise on what's very important. So draw the line on what's important for you. If these are the ethics and the politics of the work, then you draw the line there. You could be flexible in everything else, in uh, where the work would go, um, flexible in how the outcome, um, there are places that you should be super flexible in because it's better for the work and better for you as human and and as an artist and it will make you grow but there are um uh, specific things that you need to find that you should draw the line in and do not compromise no matter uh, what happens and people uh, uh, don't be scared to do that because people will respect that Dali? Top tips. I think Tanya said everything, and I am like myself starting my career, and um, like to be honest, I, I answered this question before when I said when I moved here, the first thing that I did is to know people, to have a community, and that's what Tanya said. <laughs> so yes, knowing people is very important because like they put you in connection this is one but they help you in developing a lot of things a lot of skills uh, ideas uh, like language uh, we use in in the art scene and everything so this has helped you become uh, knower and become um, like uh, shape your work and uh, shape ideas Thank you. I think that is actually, um, sadly, but wonderfully, a really wonderful place to end, to bring kind of back round to that question of relations and collaborations and the kind of, the kind of, I guess, the, the kind of centrality of people and those relationships, which is obviously so, so crucial to both of your work, but also in particular comes so much and so strongly to the fore in Lavender Man. Um, 
we lose the live, live stream and also the um, live, the kind of ca live captioner at eight, eight o'clock. And I think it's important that there's some time for some thank yous. So um, I think I would like to thank you all. Um, well, thank, thank, sorry, thank on all your behalf, um, Alessandra, Xavier and the team at, um, at Performing Borders for their support and both of the collaboration that we've we've seen in the new commission, but also obviously of kind of making this event this evening happen. I'd also like to thank Julia, who I'm sure my rapid speech has formed not the easiest of live captioning. So thank you to everyone who's been working behind the scenes to put to put this event on. Um, obviously, thank you all for you as an audience and to everybody who posed questions. I'm sorry that we couldn't kind of dwell on some of them for longer, but that's unfortunately kind of the way with these. I'm sure that um, if you email Tanya and Dali, they will be happy to kind of open up discussion and make other connections. And finally, of course, I want to thank um, Tanya and Dali for sharing both Lavender Man with us, but also um, for the inspiring and incredibly generous conversation. Collaborations are, of course, incredibly public things, and we enjoy consuming the results. But there are also intensely private relationships that touch us all incredibly deeply and can also have their very challenging private moments, undoing us, of course, in this process. And I want to thank um, Dali and Tanya personally, but also on your behalf for sharing their collaboration with us and for, for doing so so generously and openly. And so thank you all very much, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you are in the world, whether you're about to go to bed or whether your afternoon is just starting or, or wherever or whatever. So thank you very much. Good to talk to you and thank you for sharing all of that with us and Dali. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Harriet. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya, also.